Hello. Um, hold on. This beer was bought for me for my efforts in providing a wedding band with a keyboard and uh, somebody to play it, namely me, which is occurring tomorrow night. And what I really should be doing right now is preparing for that because somebody's wedding, for Christ's sake, and it's important that weddings go well. However, so I derail that preparation. Me and the good lady, Dr. Collins, have just watched the Tenth Planet episode four. Now, I could sit here all night and talk about the Tenth Planet episode four. And if you know your Doctor Who, you know why. And if you know your Doctor Who, you'll know it's absolutely impossible to talk about the Tenth Planet without 45 years of other stuff weighing heavily on it. And so, let's get the stuff we can do out of the way. Great episode of Doctor Who. I mean, I keep saying that, but it really is a great episode of Doctor Who. And it's a great episode of Doctor Who because the Cybermen are still petrifying in it. Um, those voices just go straight through me there. Oh, creepy. Cutler, I forgot what happens to Cutler. And I just thought it was all going to be happy ever after for Cutler, but the guy's a psycho. Now, I've read a couple of uh, bits and bats since finishing watching it rather than prepare for this wedding band. And, you know, the general consensus is that Cutler's a poor accent, this, that, and the other. But I genuinely felt for, well, felt for, you know, guy in an impossible situation, unable to adapt to the to the stresses of this particular context. Wow. I think I don't think the fandom has been very fair on Cutler. I thought he was a great character. And uh, uh, and his face-off with Hartnell, who in this episode, for the amount of time that he is in this episode, I mean, he's got, he's got his chops back. Let's be honest, he really comes out and does his best. Now, admittedly, for reasons that we will all know, the Doctor does start to degrade, shall we say, towards the end. So we can say that Polly still has an opportunity to prove herself for what we see we love. And Ben's just amazing. What a companion. What a pity that so much of Ben has disappeared from the archives, because what a legend. Anyway, so I'm happy with the resolution of the plot. I'm, I'm okay with everything just sort of finishing. Um, Philip Sandifer has some lovely ideas and narrative collapse uh, in this particular story, like The Chase, so I would strongly recommend you go out and purchase this book, or its second edition, which has a better cover in my opinion, but there we go, and you'll be able to hear all about that. Now, let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? His fucking face changed! He was him, and now he's him! How the hell did that happen? So anyway, being a viewer who knows nothing more than up to this episode of this strange program in 1966 that we've been watching. I mean, it's a bit abrupt. It's a bit abrupt. And I love, I love Hartnell's last few proper lines. Keep warm. He says, I think that's a lovely line. Keep warm. Oh, and then it happens. And it is too quick. It, I mean, maybe it's not too quick back then, but it just felt a bit, abrupt but mercy me his freaking face changed ah dear me so we're all in a state of shock what does this mean um now's probably a good opportunity we're three minutes and 30 something in now's probably a good opportunity so that's the end of Hartnell isn't it by the shouting and um it's probably worthwhile having a look back and having a think of how good he was and the problem is that we've had a fair few episodes where he's kind of been shoved to the side um, and that's a pity because there were flashes in this of when he was at his best and uh, we watched the animation today but there are a few clips that are still existent and just even in those brief little clips when he's talking up to the Cybermen it's really really good and you can see he's got the fire in his eyes giving it his all because he knows this is his last proper episode as the Doctor. Probably, he thought it was the last ever episode as the Doctor, let's be perfectly honest. Um, but bless him, he's old. He's old. And uh, and the time was right. The time was right. You know, 16 episodes ago, perhaps more than that. But what a hero. What a legend. I love Hartnell. Now, in the um, spirit of full disclosure, Libby's chuffed that Hartnell's gone. She's never warmed to him. Um, 
but I, I've had my appreciation of Hartnell enhanced by this process. I think he was an exemplary doctor, and I think that he uh, obviously captured the hearts and minds of, of you know millions of people throughout the world with his um, performance. Uh, and, and I think, you know, we've got to be chuffed about that. What a guy. What a guy. And I'm going to miss him because what a doctor. There we go. So blimey. That's all of the Hartnell's done. Wicked. Uh, and what a story to finish on. I would say it is up there. Tenth Planet is up there. And this is not to do with it being a regeneration story or a Cybermen story. I genuinely think Tenth Planet is up there. Uh, a lot. My reservation, let's be honest, a lot of my reservations about it is, what could it have been? Well, it could have been anything, couldn't it? But the bottom line is, the Cybermen are petrifying in it. Cutler's a real, I think Cutler's a great character. And, and there's an interesting tension occurring around the Doctor. I mean, what more do you want from a story? Absolutely fantastic. So I would say Tenth Planet is up there as one of the best uh, Hartnell stories. I still have a massive amount of affection for things like the Time Meddler. The Aztecs is phenomenal. Some of those early stories of old seem so long ago now, but uh, I mean, the Sensorize that came really low in the Doctor Who magazine poll recently. I really enjoyed the Sensorize. I really thought it was the show finding its feet in a sci fi context. Anything with Stephen Taylor in is worth watching, apart from the Celestial Toy Maker. But the Gunfighters, if you've not gone to see the Gunfighters, well, you're wrong. Go and watch the Gunfighters. It's flipping ace. But fundamentally, if if it came down to one, the one I want to really rewatch again, and to be honest, the one, aside from a certain story that may be coming up now and another certain story that may be coming up um, at the end of the next se this season, uh, I'd want the Myth Makers back. Because the, that just blew me away. Three episodes of bawdy carry-on comedy, uh, and then just everybody dies. I, <laughs> maybe that says more about me, but there was something about that story that just really got to me. I really enjoyed that. So listen, there's about seven of you, two, two of you, and four of you are probably my mom. Um, cheers for if you've been watching all the way through Hartnell. It's been really, really good. I've had a really, really good time. Uh, and we've got my friend Paul has lent me an ominous pile of CDs here. You may read some of those titles, perhaps. 